Lord, we thank you for loving us, for dying to set us free. We thank you that you are good and your mercy endureth forever. Lead us, guide us, fill us with your spirit, transform us by your power, mercy, and grace. In Christ's name, amen. Amen. Morning. So, uh, let's see. What version do you like? Uh, New Living. New Living. 42 is here. Uh, what do we have here? Christian Standard is fine. Christian Standard or New Living. New Living is fine. New Living it is. Pick it up at verse 42, folks. First, uh, Corinthians chapter 15. Working with the New Living Translation, NLT. I'll be back in a second. No. We shall be picking up in verse 42. After a momentary break, let me get this uh, iPad squared away here. Okay, what we can do with that. Yeah, I'm going to actually back off to verse 40, just so we can get some context here. And there it is. Yeah, yesterday we talked about um, there are also bodies in the heavenlies, bodies on earth. Uh, and um, talking about the, uh, the, the natural contrasting the uh, heavenly. And that's how verse 40 begins. There are also bodies in the heavens and bodies on earth. The glory of the heavenly bodies is different from the glory of the earthly bodies. Okay, contrast. This is all about these contrasts between supernatural and natural and heavenly and earthly and so forth. Verse 41, the sun has one kind of glory, while the moon and stars each have another kind. Uh, and even the stars differ from each other in their glory. So even though they may be of the self, the bodies talked about are in the same realm, even so they have distinctive glories, each their own. And we talked about how the sun and the sun light and the sun warmth and so forth moves us uh, in a way different from the way the light uh, and the um, uh, atmosphere of moonlight moves us. Sure. So, uh, even stars different each glory. So, verse 42 today. It is the same way with the resurrection of the dead. So, it's, this is all set up for the resurrection, which is, of course, the major theme, the underlying theme of this entire uh, chapter. Our earthly bodies are planted in the ground when we die but they will be raised to live forever. Our bodies are buried in brokenness, but they will be raised in glory. They're buried in weakness, but they will be raised in strength. They are buried as natural human bodies, but they will be raised as spiritual bodies. For just as there are natural bodies, there are also spiritual bodies. And what he's saying is the natural bodies are like the foundation for the spiritual bodies yet to come. In our own case, when it comes to our resurrection, we start with a natural body. It's what we're in now. Yep. Eventually we die. Coming forth in resurrection is our spiritual body with our redeemed resurrection body, um, a considerable upgrade from <laughs> where we are now. There you go. That's, that's the promise. That's what we saw in Jesus. So much so that he was really barely recognizable when he yep. was in his resurrection body. Um, even his disciples at Galilee, when, he, when they, uh, they uh, met up to go fishing, saw him. They say, you know, it's kind of one of those things. Yeah, I guess that's him. But wow. <laughs> <laughs> at the same time, of course, they saw him. Uh, the last he saw, they saw of him was literally physically beaten beyond recognition anyway. Right. So. Uh, to go from that as a basis up to a resurrection body. You can imagine the contrast. 
uh, on the road, road to uh, road uh, to Emmaus, right. um, we had a a, a similar uh, contrast. So the upgrade is is considerable. It's uh, I, I can imagine, and it's not just the physical appearance. This goes way beyond uh, the, the abilities, the capacities. I think we'll be able to pick up uh, the ability to move in different dimensions beyond just this. Uh, space-time continuum and that we're in now, this uh, three-dimensional uh, space moving only in one direction forward in time. Yeah, uh, but I, th I think, I think the fourth more. dimension works too in our glorified body. I don't think we're bound by time, space, or time. Um, anyway, yeah. So, so the natural man, each of us was born physically. We, we went through the womb tube, popped out, said, hey world, but each of us needs to be born again spiritually. Uh, that which is born of the flesh is flesh, that which is born of the spirit is spirit. And then that which is born of the spirit re, rekindles, like Rich said, but he said it better, the, the, the recognizable flesh through the body. So, and we're thinking about an eternal city that's uh, 1400 miles cubed, but I don't think that the that the heavenly body is limited to that that space. I think, no. who knows where it is? So, it, it's astronomically, geometrically, finer than this one that we're stuck with now, and we're only stuck with this because there's a there's a time period until our our supernatural bodies take over. I got a sneaking suspicion that black holes are going to be the subway system of the universe. <laughs> Just a wild guess. Folks, you heard it here but, first. But, uh, Mark this day on your calendar. We have revolutionized <laughs> physical science here. Yes. Yeah, but the black holes are so powerful. There's no way any natural body that we know of can even survive entering one. There, but uh, in close. a supernatural state, they could. Yeah, I got a feeling you could catapult us just about anywhere in the universe. There you go. Just a guess. Wild but guess. you heard it here first. Yeah. And if he's wrong, you can send a letter to his PO box. Right, exactly. <laughs> Picking up in 45. The scriptures tell us that the first man, Adam, became a living person. Now, that's a fascinating sentence for biology and physiology. Um, he was a pile of dust that, get, that God gathered and, and breathed into. The difference between the dust and the soul of Adam was the breath of God Almighty. Now, some don't understand that, and some think that we came from sludge or whatever. But, but the more the more sludge stories you, you hear, the less glorifying that is. The creator of the universe just took time to gather particles, breathe into them, and a soul was formed named Adam. Yeah, animated the dust of the earth, the uh, the crust I wish of I the said earth, that. like he said. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, little calcium, lots of water. Um, but it all came alive. Right. It became animated by the power of God. That's right. Period. And ask any evolutionist, where did life originate? How did life originate? The very core of the theory, you know, the very foundation upon which all the rest of the theory should be based, haven't got a clue. That's right. But they tell you otherwise, they're making something up. Adam. And they may passionately be making something up. Because, oh, yeah. Because the other option is that there is a creator of the universe who spoke, who breathed life, who breathed life into, into mankind. And those are your only choices. Yeah. Either it happened by accident or it happened on purpose. Yeah. I much prefer that I am a, a creature of purpose than a freak of the universe. Yeah. yeah uh, there was a Dr. Ant Anthony Fluo, well known atheist of the previous generation, kind of a grandfather to today's atheists, who was very animate, uh, adamant about his atheism. But uh, in the final analysis, when he got up into his 80s, he realized, you know, it makes much more sense to believe that there was a creator uh, and did so the, in his final days. Yes. Just inescapable truth. The man was honest enough with himself and everybody else Eventually. to just come come around to saying, yeah. you know, really, this didn't come together by chance. Just look at your body, 100 trillion cells in perfect bilateral symmetry falling together by chance. 
You realize how ridiculous that is? Of oh, course yeah. not, because you have been brainwashed <laughs> to think uh, to think otherwise. So it's amazing how malleable our consciences can be. Yeah. Um, so feed it good stuff. Uh, let's see. Verse 46, what comes first is the natural body, then the spiritual body comes later. Mm -hmm. uh, like I said, foundation, the natural foundation, but the spiritual um, of fu of fullness comes forth to complete the picture, complete the creation. That's what God, God is doing here. He's completing his creation That's right. through this refinement process of putting us through this school of hard knocks. 47. Adam, the first man, was made from the dust of the earth, while Christ, the second man, came from heaven. 48. Earthly people are like the earthly man, and the, <laughs> and the heavenly people are like the heavenly man. Just as we are now like the earthly man, we will someday be like the heavenly man. Wow. Huh? So amazing. So amazing that God could regenerate us in the, even in the interim so that we are no longer exactly like we was before we said yes to Jesus. We're born again, we have spiritual insights, but we're certainly not the complete package in the biological sense, in the theological sense, in the sense we are. Verse 50. What I am saying, dear brothers and sisters, is that our physical bodies cannot inherit the kingdom of God. These dying bodies cannot inherit what will last forever. Which leads us to the interesting question about the pre-Christ raptures of people. How does, how does those people taken up rapture-wise in the Old Testament function? And the answer has to be they're still recognizable, but their body functions have been somewhat transformed by their, by their faith in God. So... So they're recognizable. How did how did they know? How did they know the the um, prophets on the Mount of Transfiguration? Well, they didn't know a little bumper sticker that said, "Hi, my name is," you know. But instead, uh, so those guys have been changed, but we will be radically changed beyond even that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're receiving some divine protection for That's that right. particular mission. It's a mission for them. Amen. 51, but let me reveal to you a wonderful secret. We will not all die, but we will all be transformed. It will happen in a moment, in the blink of an eye, in the twinkling of an eye, even quicker. Yes. When the last trumpet is blown. By the way, the last trumpet is not one of the seven tribulation trumpets. That's right. Those are trumpets of angels. And this it's trumpet also not is the trump of God. And it's only only referenced twice, once on Mount Sinai and once here. And it's also not the, the trumpet of the rapture. Uh, so I, I, I have people who are seriously confused about which trumpet is which trumpet. Yeah. And you got to figure it out in a timeline and then say, but also Jewish timelines don't always run according to our timeline. They they kind of they kind of crunch in. Um, time and space implication of this thing and then they run with that and then come back mm -hmm. nice for when the trumpet sounds this is the trump of god those who have died and this of course is where you have uh, uh, echoing what's in uh Thess thessalonians first first thessalonians yep. four <laughs> those who have died will be raised to live forever amen and we who are living will also be transformed. Paul fully thought this was going to happen within the course of his and, life. And really, he did. And yet, if, if this had happened in Paul's time, you and I wouldn't be walking in Jesus. Hmm. But, because, but because God delayed more and more and more and more, people have an opportunity to get saved. And yeah. how wonderful that is for me. <laughs> yeah, he's speaking as a living person now in, in the yeah. present tense. Yep. As if it, because he's talking at imminence. Uh, that, yes, uh, and he, he was thinking that. Yeah. So, or at least he had pockets of thinking that. Yeah. So, um, don't I, I, frankly, I like, I, I kind of prefer myself that if this we were a those, <laughs> those, were, those who are living, 
will also be transformed. But history is will will bear that out. Yep. For our dying bodies must be transformed into bodies that will never die. Our mortal bodies must be transformed into immortal bodies. What a, what a simple sentence. What an incredibly complicated sentence that is. Mm -hmm. The biology of transforming DNA and dying tissue into living tissue. Uh, like what? <laughs> um, we can... We can do all kinds of organ transplants, but the new organ is still on a death path. Just because you got a new organ doesn't mean, but here, the new organs are on a life path. Uh, they're not, they're not built to decay. Uh, I could probably figure out how to say that better, but they're, but they are built to live eternally with the Creator of the universe who loves us. Amen. Fifty-four. Then when our dying bodies have been transformed into bodies that will never die, this scripture will be fulfilled. Death is swallowed up in victory. Oh, death, where is your victory? Oh, death, where is your sting? Yes. For sin is the sting that results in death, and the law gives uh, sin its power. What an interesting... What an unusual way to think about the power of sin and the, the sting of death coming from sin and living and 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 uh, and living creatures in power on a death on a death spiral because of because of Adam's sin but also because of our own. Yeah, sin is the sting that results in death and the law gives sting its power. Yeah. But thank God yes. he gives us victory over sin and death through our Lord Jesus Christ, who yeah. nailed the law to the cross with himself. There you go. The, the power of the law uh, finished, yeah. to tell us die, done with. Therefore, uh, death and sin, sin uh, lose their uh, power. Amen. They lose their grip. Verse 58. Uh, so, my dear brothers and sisters, be strong and immovable. Always work enthusiastically for the Lord, for you know that nothing you do for the Lord is ever useless. Wow. What a strong challenge to this church in Corinth 2,000 years ago. What a strong challenge to us. Very powerful chapter. So tomorrow, we're going to do chapter 15 again, but we're going to do it in the message. And uh, um, Yeah, it's how, quite a read. What a, um, vast insights into different things that the scriptures tell us and some things that leave us scratching our heads. So, Lord, we thank you for your power over sin. We thank you for your victories. We would ask, oh, Lord, that this be a glorious day in your presence. We thank you for all that you have planned. Bless us, keep us safe and strong. Let us walk joyously in Christ's name. Amen. Yes. Amen. Thank you again, Lord, for your word, your spirit, your instruction, your direction. Help us to refine our lives through them that we might uh, live lives that glorify you yes. in Yeshua's name. Amen, amen. amen. Blessings amen. to you all. Bye. There it is.